Hi, I'm Jeff Rinderley. I'm the Wellness Director at Gay City Health Project in Seattle, Washington, and I'm here to tell you more about our Cue to Action. It was a project that Gay City had been working on over the past year and a half. We were funded through the Communities Putting Prevention to Work grant that we received through Public Health of Seattle and King County. It's a project that focuses on tobacco prevention and control policies among businesses and organizations that serve the LGBT community. Some background about Gay City Health Project. We're a gay and bisexual men's health organization in Seattle, Washington. We were founded in 1995. We're a small nonprofit with a staff of about 11 people. We are the premier provider of HIV and STI testing. And in fact, we had uh, over 2,300 clients last year at our wellness center. We have other holistic programs as well that include social events for LGBT people in recovery, uh, a lot of arts programming, spirituality for um, people who want to explore spirituality issues, and we also operate the LGBT library and resource line. A large piece of our work is also around tobacco, and historically that's involved media campaigns and cessation services, both individual services as well as small groups. And with this project, we wanted to take it a step further and really start looking at policy and systems. The reason Gay City is involved in tobacco prevention work is because we know our population is affected greatly. We know that the LGBT population is nearly twice as likely as non-gay people to use tobacco, and this is a pretty disproportionate figure. Lots of reasons for that um, that you can certainly find out more information about if you do some research online, but we know that LGBT folks have historically socialized in bars where there was uh, tobacco being used. We also know that as a community, we've been targeted by the tobacco industry, and there's a lot of information out there if you want to learn more about that. We really felt like those factors lended tobacco to be framed as a social justice issue, not just a health issue. In the fall of 2010, Gay City received a grant from Public Health of Seattle, King County, in the amount of approximately $200,000. And this is part of the uh, national effort that was uh, part of the Communities Putting Prevention to Work projects. Uh, all the projects focused on either tobacco or healthy eating and active living. So our piece was around tobacco and specifically on policy and systems change. We wanted to work with the businesses and organizations that would be attending Pride Fest at Seattle Center and we wanted to help them to develop some policies that would support the health of our community. So to do this, we uh, first sort of ramped up with a media campaign and then we specifically worked on the policy project. Our media campaign, as I said, really talked about tobacco as, as more than a health issue, but also a social justice issue. We wanted something that was um, easily identifiable, something that was clearly a, a gay imagery. And we also wanted to create an expectation that not only was this an issue in our community, but that the businesses and organizations that serve us should care about our health. The other piece is that we wanted this campaign to have life beyond tobacco and possibly apply to other issues, other health issues that we deal with, activism, political issues. And so we came up with the idea of our cue to action with the pink icon, the cue, something that's very identifiably gay. Uh, and then the imagery all focused a, a lot on numbers and um, specific information to raise awareness. This was one of the first images that we released as part of the campaign. Uh, this says, step back, then step it up. And this image was a poster and a print ad, and it, it's one that when the reader is close to the, to the image, it's kind of difficult to read, but as they step back and see the image more clearly, they can see the message. The text down at the bottom says, our community has a history of combating injustice, and together we've made great strides. But there are still forces at work against us. LGBTQ people are two times more likely to smoke than straight people. Why? Take a look at the big picture. And so that sort of set the tone for the campaign. Some of the other images uh, that we came out with focused on specific statistics uh, within the community, showing that lesbian and bisexual women were smoking at twice the rate of, of their uh, non-gay counterparts. Um, same with the men. So bringing up those numbers, um, all the images had QR codes on them, so viewers could scan those and end up on the RQ website to learn more information. Another piece of the campaign was as we signed businesses up and, and got their tobacco policies in place, we wanted to, to do some highlighting and, and thank them publicly. And so we had a series of the ads that listed those businesses that would be coming to Pride Fest and um, thank them and show what they're doing for the community. So this campaign led up to Pride Fest, which happened at the end of June in 2011. And we sort of culminated that by having a, an actual presence at Pride Fest as well. So we had 
uh, imagery, videos appearing on the on the jumbotron screen with tobacco messaging. Um, we also had a piece of the campaign called "I Am," where we encourage people to stop by our booth and tell us about who they were and what's important to them and what matters with their health. Uh, it was really well received, and uh, people received T-shirts, um, cards where they could write those messages, and we've included all those on our Facebook page. And so those sort of made the rounds in the community as well. The other big piece of the campaign was the policy project. Uh, so as the media campaign was going on, we also started working with One Degree Events, who are the producers of Seattle Pride Fest. Uh, One Degree welcomes nearly 80,000 people to downtown Seattle each summer to celebrate LGBT Pride. And we knew that there would probably be around 135 businesses and organizations coming to that event. So as part of our, as part of our project, Gay City took some of that funding that we received and we used it to serve as presenting sponsor for Pride Fest. So we provided a $30,000 sponsorship, and in return, we were able to uh, help to develop some of the guidelines around the vendor policies. We encouraged vendors to have, at the very least, a referral policy to tell their employees or their organization members where they could go to seek smoking cessation services. So we did a lot of uh, we had a lot of companies who put together policies that would refer people to our state quit line, 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Um, they, certainly, we encouraged vendors to adopt policies around a smoke-free workday or a tobacco-free site, as well as look at their policies around health insurance benefits and if smoking cessation services were covered. So there was a wide range of, of options available in terms of the policies, and we did some capacity building with those vendors and um, talked with them, gave them model policies, and uh, developed all those from the period of about January 2011 to June 2011 when the event actually happened. Some of the outcomes were that we had about 128 vendors at Pride Fest in 2011. Uh, 41 of those vendors had existing policies. And a lot of those vendors were medium-sized companies to large corporations where they already had, um, you know, health insurance benefit policies in place or smoking cessation on site. Um, so there were 41 of those. But we did help 87 vendors create new policies. A lot of those vendors were smaller businesses, local businesses, one or two person operations. Um, so we're pretty proud about that. That's a, a good number of new policies. And if you look, you see that about 89 of our of our vendors had basic cessation referrals. Um, 31 of our vendors had policies around sponsorship, and that's specifically a lot of the nonprofit organizations who, who develop policies saying, we will not take funding from, from tobacco companies or co-sponsor events with them. Uh, 27 of our vendors had a comprehensive cessation referral, meaning that they had a specific program, either on-site or a program they would refer employees to. Uh, two vendors had tobacco-free work days, and 16 vendors had other policies, so just various sort of uh, variations on, on the policies that we that we provided. Some of the challenges to the program were that we did receive some unexpected resistance to these policy changes, specifically among some of the local nonprofits. Um, some of the other organizations in the area weren't really clear about why Gay City was asking this of them, and so we did receive some media coverage around that. Um, some of it was controversial. Um, a lot of talk about sort of individual rights. Um, is it okay for an organization to sort of force this idea on people, um, particularly when it's a marginalized community like, like the lesbian and gay community? And that's by no means what we were doing. We we're certainly just trying to help people develop policies that would allow them to have access to services if they wanted them. Um, another challenge was that vendors didn't always understand what was required of them, particularly the small businesses. Um, a lot of these smaller businesses didn't really even have policies in place, and so for us to ask them to develop tobacco policies was somewhat challenging and we had to do some um, really some some guidance with them along the way. The other piece was just the timeline itself was a challenge because we were leading up to such a, a large community event over a period of about six months um, it, it made it it made it tough at points but I think that um, that allowing a little more time to, to do this kind of project can be really beneficial. Successes of the project include the fact that we really sort of created a community discussion about tobacco issues, um, that even with the controversy that we encountered and getting media coverage in the Seattle Times, it, it provided a chance for us to discuss this issue as a community and how 
we are targeted and how tobacco is a social justice issue. It definitely allowed us to develop some new partnerships with other organizations, other nonprofits, some of the, the businesses, and certainly with One Degree Events who produced Pride Fest. Um, as I said before, we got new policies from 87 vendors, which is great to see. And I think it also helped create the expectation that um, businesses should care about our health and that they need to demonstrate that. If they're going to attend an event like Pride Fest and sell us their products, they need to show that they actually are invested in our community. We also hope that the whole project set a standard for future Pride Fest, that this will be something we'll consider these issues of health as we celebrate uh, as a community. To learn more about Arcuta Action, you can definitely check out all the other resources that are available in the online toolkit. Uh, there's a replication manual, some other videos to watch, some of our raw media files that you can manipulate, or you can certainly contact us. Our website is gaycity.org slash rq, or you can contact myself or Robert Roth at Gay City Health Project.